Hey YouTube, uh, Ben Ochart here, and uh, I mentioned in a prior video that we we're going to talk about sumps. I went looking for information on sumps, and it was very hard to find basic information. There was certainly a lot of advanced information, especially from uh, the reefing community, you know, the people that keep the corals and the salties out there. They have a tremendous amount of information. But just in general, it was hard to find some basics. So let me give you a few basics that might help you if you're planning on setting up your first sump. There certainly are lots of choices out there when it comes to selecting your sump. Aesop and they wanted from Equi Aquion and I mean, lots of manufacturers out there that are in the sump market. And of course there's the do-it-yourselfers. Uh, this one is one that I just happened to pick up. Got a special deal on made by a company called a miracle and you can see it uses a trickle system that comes over the media in this case some filter pads some blue balls some pinky floss and then some of that uh, super gravel from biohome and I have a chamber that I believe was intended originally for a skimmer which I'm not using I'll be putting a um, algae scrubber in there, and then a third chamber for your pump, which would normally go in the very back of the chamber, but in my case I have a lot of media back there because the pump was rattling a little bit in that back chamber. So um, instead I put media back there which is getting um, very low water flow, so it's probably going to give me a little bit of aerobic uh, bacteria which will help to reduce or gas off some of the nitrates. I also have some gravel in the bottom of this uh, sump and for the development of beneficial bacteria. I'm not really sure if that's needed or necessary or if it's just going to be a trap for detritus. Uh, we'll see how that works out. I'm not entirely decided on that yet. But essentially what you're doing is you've taken a large canister or an HOB, a hang on back filter, and you're just simply running it the same way except in an expanded fashion with a lot a lot more room and flexibility for media. So once you've selected once you've selected the sump you want, then you need to figure out whether you want to go with a hang on back style overflow system or whether you want to have a tank that's drilled or has a built in a built in overflow like mine. As you can see in my case the water spills into this tower that runs along the, uh, the side of the tank, right along here, and then goes into some plumbing right here. This tank was drilled. I had to put a bulkhead in there. Those bulkheads were extra secured with a little bit of aquarium safe silicone, and then there's a simple on-off ball valve shut off. Now this valve had to be adjusted, adjusted so that the proper water flow or the amount of water flow would match up with the gallons per hour of the pump, giving me a level amount of water in the sump. Once I got the right amount, once I was able to match up the proper uh, amount of water I want coming through, I marked you can see there, there's a marker that marks where the valve should be, and that is something you should definitely do. Mark that section so that you know how much water you should have going through the pipe. Once you've got it dialed in, mark it so there's no guesswork in the future. I have it marked on both sides. I'm not sure if you can see it on this side, so, it's, so it fits in perfectly, and there's no guesswork as to where that valve needs to be. And so you don't end up running more water into your sump than your pump can handle. Probably the best advice I got was from Dennis Rudell, who told me to fill the tank to the level that the um, to the level of the sump that I want, not any other any other method. So I filled the tank until the sump got to the level to the desired level. In this case, about an inch below the Americal, the Americal uh, logo. 
I tried it several ways before I actually reached out to Dennis, and I ended up getting a lot of water on my floor, both from overflowing the sump and also overflowing the tank. If you're going to be running a pump like I do in a bedroom, one of your main concerns is going to be uh, noise. This is a Rio 32 high HF. You see it here. And this pump is a little bit, in my estimation, a little bit noisy. It's moving about 1,500 gallons of water an hour. It moves a lot of water. And something that's critical is this valve that you see back here. This, that valve there prevents water from siphoning back into the sump in the event that your pump goes off. So that valve will shut. It's a one-way flow valve, and it shuts when water starts to come back down from the tank. And if your pump stops and you don't have that, it will actually siphon. And one workaround that people do is they try and keep the output close to the surface. But even though my output is pretty close to the surface, that would still be a tremendous amount of water to come back into the sump in the event of a pump failure, and that would flood, that would flood the area. So that is a, that's a game changer right there. Be sure to definitely put one of those uh, one-way flow valves into your uh, tubing that is going to the output into your tank. One last uh, tip that can help with, um, with the preventing of a siphon from the output back into the sump is to drill a hole in the output right at the water line or just a hair below the water line. Drill a little hole in your output. What that does then is that when the water does start to siphon back into the sump, that air hole when the water gets to the point where that air hole starts sucking air, it'll break the siphon. So, just a little bonus tip for you there. I have the heaters here, which of course reduces the amount of clutter in the tank. But I went out and bought this big, looks like a toilet, looks like a toilet float, this thing here. What that does is, if it happens to sink too low, it turns the pump off. So if my water level gets too low, I don't burn out my pump. Even though now I've noticed they have pumps that will turn off, they'll shut off when the water level goes low. They have automatic shut off, so that, which I think is brilliant. I'm looking at possibly replacing this pump with a DC, a direct current pump, that has far less vibration and comes with automatic shut off. So I would be able to remove this uh, this big toilet float from my uh, from my sump. You notice also I have in there some uh, some charcoal. A couple bags of Purigen are going to be put in there. I mean, it's just uh, a tremendous amount of media can go in there. I'm not even using this chamber really. So <clears throat> the first and foremost is to dial in your sump, is to fill your tank until you get your sump to the level you want it. That's with, with, the, uh, with the pump running, so that you match it up. Use your uh, ball valve so that you have the water flowing at the right volume, so you don't overflow your sump. And, uh, and definitely have something that'll stop water from siphoning back from the tank in the event of a pump failure. I keep my water level in the tank a little low, you can see here. It doesn't matter because when I close the lid, it looks like it's topped off, as I sh I'll show you here. Now, why do I keep the water at that level? Because that's water that will not be draining into the sump in the event of a uh, power failure 
or a pump failure. So only a limited amount of water will go into the sump and not flood my room. So I keep the water level low. So it'll stop flowing before it can overflow the sump. So these are a few tips. I hope they help. Uh, I wish I'd come across this video when I was setting this thing up. The truth is I didn't sleep well the first night thinking I was going to flood my room because of something I hadn't thought of. And a little bit at a time I've been learning and uh, and there's a lot, there is data out there, but it is of a more advanced nature. Maybe they figure by the time you're ready for a sump, you already are, are advanced, but they should have some, there should be more 101 stuff out there. I hope this helps if you're planning on setting one up. So there you have it. What are your thoughts on the use of a sump? Do you use one? What tips would you give me or anyone else watching this video? I'm curious. Definitely share them. And definitely share your comments below. Your thoughts are always appreciated. Rate, share, smash that sub button and that little bell so you get all, the, uh, all of the uh, notices when a new video comes out. Thank you, my friends. I appreciate the support of the channel, as always. Thanks.